Hello and welcome to Reef Talk. I'm Scott Anderson with Mile High Reefers, and I'm here with Darren from Northwest Marine 62 and Steve Rotter from Rotter Tube Reef. And today we're going to talk about recovering from marine velvet. Um, Darren has a 300 gallon Fowler tank that he had just set up and suffered from about the most epic disease you can get in your tank. I mean, marine velvet is as bad as it gets. So, Darren, can you um, talk to us about what a Fowler tank is, kind of what you had going on and how it all went so wrong and then how you've recovered from it? Hi, everyone. Yes, um, Fowler is uh, fish only with live rock. I um, transitioned over to the marine side of things after keeping and raising Central and South America and cichlids or they call New World cichlids. Um, I had several tanks at one time going. Actually, I had nine tanks running at one time. Um, so I had a, a couple of 360-gallon tanks. I sold those. I had a 240, and I had a 200, custom-built 200, up in my bedroom. And um, I sold those tanks, and I kept my 300. Um, I really like the footprint on that. <clears throat> so, I um, decided to switch over. I um, purchased uh, some pretty decent equipment, and I'll be taking a video for that for you guys later on. Um, I got all my rock in there, approximately 300 pounds of Fiji base rock, and uh, I got some uh, reef rock in there also on premium. I mixed it up. So, I had the tank up and running, and um, um, everything was going well, and introduced the fish in. Uh, slowly. Uh, fish were in there for about two and a half, three months. Um, and then um, I uh, purchased some Mexican turbo snails from my LFS. And uh, they were still in the bag, in the water in there, so they hadn't hit their tanks yet. So um, I purchased 10 of them, got them home. Um, and then I, uh, I took them out and put them in my uh, tank. Not the water, but just the yeah. snails. So anyway, um, about, uh, about four weeks later, uh, two of my, uh, I had a Heniacus and a uh, Pro Scale uh, butterfly uh, die. They, were, they died overnight, and I didn't know what was wrong. And then um, upon further look, I noticed that my fish looked like they'd been dipped in powdered sugar. So I, uh, I got a hold of Steve, and he helped me. We kind of ascertained what it was, and... Um, um, so I had to make the painstaking task of taking my uh, rock out of there with all my snails. And um, I had an assortment of astrea snails also. Got my fish out. For, and for uh, those of you that know, trying to get a, a fish out of a, a tank with, with rock in there is almost impossible. Yeah, Especially um, 300 gallons. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I had to uh, take everything out, get the fish out, and got them quarantined. And before I got a foothold on it, I lost a total of uh, about seven fish. Right. So uh, uh, once um, I got them into my quarantine tanks, they were fine. Um, they were eating and uh, survived that. Um, I had a couple of that were almost goners, but um, I treated them right away. And I was doing water changes uh, every other day. Um because I have a pretty good sized vat, a saltwater vat in the uh, garage, so I have uh, access to water uh, readily. So I um, started doing water changes there, and uh, they're fine. Um, let my tank sit. I talked to both of you guys about that, and uh, both of you recommended that um, let the tank sit uh, empty or fallow for uh, about eight weeks, and that's what I did. Um, so I uh, put the fish back in. Uh, about a uh, week and a half ago, and uh, I have a total of about seven fish that I put back in. So, and everybody's doing fine since I put them back in last week. That's nice. awesome. So, for those of you who haven't seen Darren's channel, I recommend that you check out his videos because he's got a really awesome quarantine set up in his garage that he kind of had to set up over a real short period of time to make this happen. Darren, how did you quarantine these fish for eight weeks? Because that's a long time to try to keep a fish in quarantine. Right. I, uh, when I used to have, uh, <coughs> excuse me, um, uh, salt, uh, excuse me, I had freshwater fish. I uh, 
I had a couple of tanks I kept back. I have a, uh, a uh, 55, a 75, and then I have a, a 29. So what I did when I took my fish out, I had a, I had a, an assortment of peppermint shrimp, fire shrimp, and cleaner shrimp. So I put those in my 29, and uh, uh, those guys have been in there for nine, ten weeks now, and they're doing fine. Um, I uh, just kept the other two tanks back, and I uh, took my fish, and so they wouldn't have uh, any more undue stress. I just uh, put some fish over my 55, and I put some in my 75, so they wouldn't be stressed out. And so I started doing water changes every other day. Um, Steve, both of you guys advised me to do water changes, and even though it was a it was a pain in the ass. Um, yeah, it, is, yeah. Part, it uh, I. Um, Go through a lot of salt, too. Yeah, it, it was. Um, you know, uh, thank God, I, like I said, my uh, my uh, saltwater tank is about uh, 10 feet away from, actually 10 feet away from my 75, which is on the wall, and uh, it's about uh, two feet away <laughs> from my 55. So Very I have nice. the holes, and I just attached it to there. And uh, I have a ball valve, so I just uh, opened up the uh, ball valve, and just uh, I've got a uh, blue line pump which uh, has got some pretty good flow to it. Um, so uh, I was able to uh, just do the water changes there with, with ease. Oh, that's awesome. No carrying buckets. No, <laughs> no buckets. Man. I've done that before. <laughs> Did you end up um, treating these guys with any sort of copper, like cupramine or anything, or were they just kind of okay? No, I, uh, uh, I treat them with cupramine. So um, I, uh, uh, started dosing them. Um, and kind of both of you guys recommended that I use cupramine. Um, I have never had anything like this when I've been in the uh, freshwater, and I, and I always uh, quarantine fish there too. And uh, like in one of my videos, I explained, and some people never quarantine their fish, and they might be fine. Yeah. They might be fine, and uh, never, uh, never, you know, go through the adverse uh, problems I did. Unfortunately, uh, I. Uh, I went through it right away, so... Um, yeah, that's rough. Yeah, I when I had cichlids, I, I'd lost fish to, you know, fighting and stuff like that, um, uh, but uh, not to uh, not to any kind of uh, disease. Uh, you know, I did get ick a couple of different times on my fish, but that's because um, uh, um, they get stressed out sometimes. You know, I had some smaller fish get it and, uh, and pull them out and, and treat them, but I never treated them with cupramate, so... But other than that, I never had any issues uh, with diseases, except for uh, one time I got a disease called a culinaris. Um, it's a uh, highly uh, aerobic disease, and uh, it's a, uh, I got some, uh, what they call clown loaches from my uh, LFS, and I talked to the owner, and he said, oh, yeah, they've been in quarantine, and actually, he brought a couple of other fish in from somebody and put them in that tank, and uh, mm -hmm. I purchased them, and got him into my tanks and uh got a raging case of columnaris and which i which i eradicated um but i didn't salt i didn't have any uh, uh any deaths that in my fish but okay i've always quarantined fish but um this is the first time i've ever had anything uh, epic like this mm -hmm. yeah so are you see i heard you say earlier that you have gotten some new fish are you quarantining those fish yeah, actually, uh, last night I, I picked up a uh, orange shoulder uh, tang. He's about, uh, about seven eight inches. Got some really nice uniformity you know, to him, and I put him in my seventy five, and I got a pair of uh, gold sifter gobies. I put those in my fifty five. So I'm going to put some uh, real uh, small container of sand in there today, so they have uh, some place to bury themselves. Good. That's great. You know. Um you know, I don't know. This whole ick and marine velvet thing, um, people will say, oh, you know, I don't know. I think Darren just hit it perfectly when he said, you know, some people won't get it, but some people can get it. And I think, you know, even if your local reef store, um, they say they quarantine, you know, mistakes can happen because let's say, yep. let's say that they're, they've got their, um, water if you buy water at the reef store if it's completely in one other end of the store in the back well let's say some kid comes in and he wants fish the guy puts his hand in a diseased tank then you come in with your five gallon jugs oh i'd like to get some salt water please and 
all of a sudden he's touching the water, he puts his hands in it, it's, it's infested then, you know. Um, you, just, you just never know is what I'm saying. You just never know. Um, there's no such thing as, um, I mean, <coughs> mistakes happen everywhere. So you never know what you're getting. Either the fish comes in from the ocean with a parasite or more than likely the fish is introduced in a holding tank in the fish store and it gets um, um, put in a, a, an aquarium with other diseased fish and then it gets it that way. You bring it into your tank and you're done. Now, I never had this problem when I started out with my 28 gallon. I got lucky and I didn't know. In fact, I would op I would float the bag, acclimate them slowly, and I would pour like half the water from the store into my tank, which is you don't ever do that but i did no. i was totally no. fine i yeah. was fine um i moved into my 75 gallon and i bought a couple pieces of live rock um bam marine velvet i got destroyed uh you just never know so ever since then like if i want rock i'll just buy dry rock rock that's not in a tank i make my own water at home it's completely separated from the store and every fish i buy as darren just said you want to quarantine it just to make sure. You can risk it, you know, but it, oh man, it's not worth it because you're going to have to remo remove all your rock. And it's just a pain in the ass, as we said. And you go through a lot of salt because you have to do water changes it's like every other day in the quarantine tank. It's just a pain in the ass. So. Yeah, it, uh, I, I, did, I did go through a lot of salt. <laughs> I did, and uh, yeah. um, it really makes you question why you're in the hobby. You know, if that thing <laughs> strikes you, it's like, oh my god, oh, yeah. this sucks. <clears throat> yeah, <clears throat> yeah, it's um, it uh, definitely uh, wasn't something I'd, I'd want to go through again. And uh, right. uh, like I said, uh, uh, I reached out to you, Steve, and uh, some of the pictures that I sent you, and uh, we kind of both ascertained it was that, and uh, yeah. it, it was. Um, so uh, yeah, it uh, not something I want to go through anytime soon. That's for sure. Well, the good news is the worst is behind you. The guys are in the 300 gallon. They're all happy. Any yep. fish you get now moving forward, you're going to quarantine. So you're putting mm -hmm. them in that holding tank and you're going to watch them for at least three weeks. <clears throat> if there's an outbreak or there's some ick or a parasite on them, you'll treat them. And then that three week in clock quarantine. will start again in quarantine. Yeah. Um, yeah. But you won't have to go through that again because now everything's clean, clear slate, ground zero, and you're fine. So you know unless of course some mistake happens like you know let me just throw that snail in i'm sure it'll be fine mm, if it's carrying a parasite on it you're going to be screwed again but um yeah you're done it, very good job and i'm glad everyone's doing really well that's awesome and uh again as scott said we're gonna have links to darren's channel check it out check out his tank it's really really nice uh eight foot long beautiful tank in fact that's the reason why I want to get a 300 gallon now is because of him, is if I haven't <laughs> spent more money in this damn hobby. <laughs> so, hey, that's not happening soon, by the way. So, maybe. I also I just want to say, <clears throat> I think uh, once you get the uh, proper equipment um, from several people that I've actually uh, uh, talked to and uh, uh, some of the books that I've read, they always, all of them, <clears throat> excuse me, they all say um, straight across the board that. Uh, you don't want to, uh, you know, try to save five bucks here or ten bucks here uh, because you'll pay right. for it. You know, you, that doesn't mean you have to get the top of the line equipment because everybody has to do it based on their budget. Um, but um, I was able to in my last video some of the equipment that I purchased uh, uh, that was for my income tax, so that's gone. <laughs> yeah. So uh, that was a pretty epic haul you got there too. Yeah. Yeah, it's like a, it's like you're walking into a, a fish store. You know, it's like everything. It's like wow. Yeah, you you basically bought everything. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I'm gonna be uh, taking a video of my uh, of my uh, support system on my 300, and I, I did get a biopellet reactor for both tanks, and uh, um, I'll be taking a, a, a video uh, probably today or tomorrow on my 180. So uh, I um, had an issue with my uh, skimmer. So, um, but um, I'll be taking a video of that. Yeah, thank you very much, everybody. Don't forget to check out Darren's channel and check out Reef Talk every Sunday. If you want to be on Reef Talk, just drop us a line, instant message us, whatever.